Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. So glad you could join us here. You may notice the set's a little bit different right now. It's because I'm undergoing, undergoing construction at both at the house and at the office. So it's kind of a double construction life, but the results hopefully should be good. Hopefully, right? So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how the GTA or the Greater Toronto Area or regions monitored by TREB, the Toronto Real Estate Board, have gotten their first real price drop in over a decade. But before I get started and break down the opportunity here, make sure you guys smash that like button, it's down there, and subscribe to the Prime Properties TO channel where you'll be getting a lot more uh, video notifications when I do some um, post them as they come along. So when you heard me, this is when most people probably panicked. Toronto officially had its first price drop in over a decade, a full 4.3% year over year. Depending on when you're watching this, you may have probably heard this in the news because as you know, negative news sells and attracts the most eyeballs. So a full 4.8% is quite significant when we've had a really great bull run in the last 20 plus years. What most people don't understand is that Toronto right now has kind of two separate markets and two narratives going on. I'll explain more about that in this in next week's episode of Prime Property. But for this week, I wanted to show you this fancy chart that we made. It'll be right up here, but I'll still keep my face on so you can see it. This is the average price in Toronto since Treb started recording average price data back in 1973. It's been a nice steady increase except for a few minor bumps in 1990 and 2008, which I'll circle here. I was not trading real estate back in 1990, but many of my mentors have told me that in 1990, it was really bad. Many Torontonians were defaulting on their mortgage and losing their houses since a five-year fixed mortgage back in the day was 12%. Yeah, that's 12%. The sales slowed, prices dropped, but about 7.32%. It's all really relative now versus then because it went from 255000 to 243000 That's a drop in a bucket compared to where prices are right now. But of course, the dollar is worth more back in the day. In 2018, the average price was 4.3% less from 822000 to 787000 It's quite a significant drop. However, CMHD reported that this is the least amount of mortgage defaults since 2006. That's with the 0.24 in Canada, which is 1 in 400 people default which is crazy low, or even better in Ontario, 0.1% or 1 in 1,000 mortgages default. Furthermore, the credit worthiness of these applicants got better, meaning those credit score got higher and they had less debt. So that kind of says a lot about the desperateness of sellers to sell. They're generally not desperate unless you know they need to sell their property or they can't wait until the prices go back up. And that's kind of what I've been seeing in 2018. They list and then they take it off if they don't get the price debt. The gang. So maybe we'll see a little bit more of that in 2019 still. Now, things get more interesting as I got real nerdy with these stats and extrapolated the number of transactions. So these are the sales in history against the average price. And we get a chart that looks like this. Now, the blue remains the same, which is the average price in GTA. And red is the number of transactions in the year. You can see that there are more dips on the red transaction curve, which is the line representing transaction, than there are with the blue line, which is the average price. This is because the number of transactions is probably more associated by my professional opinion with the buyer psychology than it is with the price. If the average purchasers hear that the doom and gloom is coming from media outlets, they kind of get scared and they can't borrow as much. So when you combine the two of them, you're going to see a lot less transaction. Now, let's look at the years. In 1990, there's a drop in transactions because the interest rate jumped overnight and less credit was available. In 2008, we had the financial crisis and everyone got scared. In 2017, the Liberal government introduced the Fair Housing Plan, or what people remember it as is the foreign bar tax, and then everybody else got scared again. And then in 2018, we had the stress test, which meant a lot less boring ability. So when you add all of those up and you look at each point, that's when we had a drop in the transaction. Even if you carefully look at the prices at each point where the transaction or number of sales drop in the line, they've generally gone back up in a year or two. Even if you bought at the highest point before the dip, Toronto has far exceeded everyone's expectation in terms of prices and it will probably continue that way with the a lot of money that is coming into the city and how little supply we have in Toronto, especially under the $1 million price point that we've been talking about so often. 
Now, making money in real estate is kind of like playing Monopoly. You win by buying houses and you only trade them in for the red hotels. Not selling your greenhouses is how you make it. Same in real estate in real life. If you don't need to sell in Toronto, hold on to it. Maybe wait for that red hotel or buy more greenhouses in the future. You're more likely to make money that way. And that's why it's very imperative you buy properties that cash flow positive. So in the dips, such as the ones we pointed out in the graph previously, these properties can pay for themselves and you're not on the hook or worried about not making your mortgage and potentially defaulting. If the buyer psychology is weak this year, our team will be able to put together many more massive cash flow condos this year. So make sure you subscribe to that mailing list for the properties I'm there as their first come first serve. I'll leave them in a link for you to subscribe to this mailing list in the description below for you to sign up so that when we do post them, you'll be the first to know and you can buy those properties, make them cash flow and hold. So you're making and creating your real estate portfolio correctly. So as you can tell, the number of transactions are at an all time low in the past decade. Plus, this is the first major dip in 20 years. So this is probably the so-called crash everyone is looking for before they buy. The question is, are you going to take that step or continue waiting? If you're going to make that step, make sure you reach out to me. I'll leave my contacts right here so that we can find the best property for you. Until next time, guys. Happy real estate.